I won't vote for either Clinton or Trump. In different ways, they're examples of what happens when government grows big. They're people who got ahead not just through hard work or having better ideas. They got ahead through political connections. Trump profited by giving money to both political parties. Hillary became famous because her husband was president, and now she's funded by their political cronies. Mark Meckler's upset by that. He started a group called Citizens for Self-Governance that will, well, Mark, I'll let you explain it. Sure. Well, I think we have an extraordinary situation in our presidential politics today. We have crony capitalism from both sides of the table represented. You have Donald Trump that paid money to the system. He admits that he gave money to politicians from both parties to get the things that he needed to profit in business. Invited Hillary to his wedding. Absolutely. Doing political favors. That's what he admits that he was getting for those invitations and that money. And the other side of the table, you have Hillary and Bill Clinton, who've literally made hundreds of millions of dollars by doing favors for people within the political system. The Clinton Foundation, talk about that. What it appears that it actually was. It has more, $2 billion. $2 billion, money from countries around the world, that money coming in while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State. It appears countries got favorable treatment. This is the ultimate political slush fund is what it actually was. I mean, one example, the Swedish company Ericsson was in trouble with the State Department for selling equipment to Iran. Then they paid Bill $750,000 for a 20-minute speech. His usual fee was below 200 tau. Seven days later, the State Department took the sanctions against Ericsson away. Now, you can't prove it's corruption. This is where the Clintons have been so good for decades in American politics, skirting the law. The law applies to little people. The law doesn't really apply to them. We just saw this in her email scandal. Right? It was laid out by Comey, Director Comey. She violated every facet of that law you could possibly violate, but no prosecution. What the FBI director said about her is pretty damning. Here's part of a Reason TV clip illustrating that. I did not email any um, classified material to anyone. There is no classified material. 110 emails in 52 email chains have been determined by the owning agency to contain classified information at the time they were sent or received. I provided all my emails that could possibly be work-related. Several thousand work-related emails that were not among the group of 30,000 emails returned by Secretary Clinton. I thought using one device would be simpler. She also used numerous mobile devices to send and to read email. And so on. She just makes it up, but she gets away with it. Lie, deny, delay, obfuscate, and eventually the scandal goes away. She uses the political system to grant favors to her friends that then grant favors in return. She's become rich off of politics. But as you point out, so does Donald Trump. Again, the flip side of the same coin, he's a patron of the crony capitalist system. He openly admits he's paid into that system in exchange for access and favors. It's very sad that this is what the American presidential election has come to today. New York Magazine ran a headline, Trump most corrupt politician ever. I don't think that's fair, and the article didn't back it up. But he's been paying off politicians, or you could say make contributions, for a long time, since 1989, around $1.4 million. The top recipients were six Democrats, uh, just four Republicans. Charlie Rangel, who was censured by the House last year, received the most Trump money. Harry Reid got Trump money. And in return, he gets what? Influence over the decisions they make, the legislation they push, the way he gets treated in the tax code, or his companies get treated in the tax code. And again, I, but I think there's a major difference. The difference is, he openly admits this, and he says... That was refreshing. It is refreshing, but he says he's going to go after that system. Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, doesn't admit that it's going on, doesn't say she's going to change any of that. She's going to continue the status quo. Will he? It's hard to say, but he at least <laughs> says he's going to attack. I'd him. like to believe that. I don't know what Donald Trump would do if he gets elected. The odds show it's not likely that he will become president. Hillary is the huge favorite. Some people are comforted by that because they say at least she's experienced. But all she's really experienced at is spending other people's money, your money. And now that she's the nominee, she's not backing away from the crazy positions Bernie Sanders took. Thought she would, but no, she's moving toward them. She wants to make college free for even richer than average Americans. Education should be free.
No fees. Free tuition. When do we want it? Now. America's going broke. Colleges don't educate very well. So more of it should be free? This is nuts. This is the socialist entitlement culture that destroyed Venezuela. Now hospitals don't have medicines. The murder rate is skyrocketed. Venezuela is a demonstration project for Hillary's old politics. Big government, special deals, cronyism. Law professor John Macy teaches courses about that at Yale, and he wrote this article titled, The Rise of Crony Capitalism. So can you explain the picture of that article? The point is that crony capitalism only works, at least in a democracy like ours, with the acquiescence of some of the citizens, which are the people on the left holding up the arm that's uh, uh, bribing. And people accept it because they think government means well and it'll reward the right people? I don't think so. Maybe. I think that people have just lost their moral compass. Nowadays, uh, we are in a sort of group culture and people say, well, Hillary may be corrupt, but she's my corrupt politician. She's doing the stuff that I want her to do with respect to the minimum wage or college tuition or affirmative action. So we've, it's become kind of a, a, a tribal political system. One of the things that has, been, that has been most interesting to me about the email scandal is her consistent refrain that I didn't break the law. What I did was legal. There's no thought about whether it was right no interest in even thinking in those terms. And that's what creates fertile ground, in my view, John, for crony capitalism. That and, and your definition of crony capitalism is broader than I had thought. You include things like teachers' unions. Sure. You require people who don't want to belong to the union to pay dues. Uh, you uh, Tenure, you can't fire the right. teacher. That's often a law. You don't worry about merit. You don't allow vouchers. You don't allow competition. Uh, you insulate You, you list the, affirmative action as cronyism. Sure. Well, again, we have government helping a group. Uh, are they helping the group? F what, for what reason are they helping the group other than make a quick things pro fair? Pro. Blacks were discriminated against for years. This evens the playing field. Right. Well, take for example a uh, a city with a hundred percent. African American city council. The political system has corrected the past injustice because the people who were previously disenfranchised are now in power and they're using that power to perpetuate benefits for themselves. I think that's crony capitalism. Uh, I think whenever one gets away from a merit-based system, crony capitalism is going to win out. I noticed that both Democrats and Republicans talk about cooperation, bipartisanship, compromise. but. This is just another way of saying, I'll give you yours, you give me some, and the state grows. I agree, they're all in the game together, and it was never intended to be this way. You know, it was supposed to be very difficult to get things done in Congress, and there are people who will complain about gridlock in Washington, D.C. The founders intended there to be gridlock in Washington, D.C. They never intended for them to be passing hundreds of laws and spending billions of dollars. The problem is too much cooperation. There's a single game going on in Washington, D.C. Both parties participate from and profit from that game. You make another point in your article that Identity politics, you say, is a form of cronyism, political cronyism, and Democrats are really big on identity politics. Hillary Clinton may become president because of identity politics. The former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright said it's women's duty to vote for a woman. Remember, there's a special place in hell for women who don't help each other. <laughs> That's Hillary on the left doubling over with laughter. Then in this speech, Hillary rejects that idea, but then supports it. Clearly, I, I'm not asking people to vote for me simply because I'm a woman. I'm asking people to vote for me on the merits. And I think one of the merits is I am a woman and I can bring those views and perspectives uh, to the White House. So what's wrong with that? She's going to bring women's perspectives. Well, I think we're talking about the most powerful leadership position in the world, and I'm looking for somebody who's qualified and competent. But we get more cronyism. 
we do get more cronyism, and I think we get more because in our system today, it's profitable. Look, there's an incredible return on investment for businesses to lobby the government. The fundamental problem isn't that they're lobbying the government. The fundamental problem is that government is so large and has so much influence over business and our personal lives that it's actually worthwhile to spend the money to influence government. When government grows, that's what happens. What Article 5 gives us is the ability to change the narrative and to ask people the question, should you decide or should Washington, D.C. decide? And I can tell you, I ask that question all over the country.